What's up guys? Today we are doing the Sherpa roof rack install. I'll uh, unbox it here in a second and we'll get going. I'm super excited for this install. I've been, I've had this box for about two weeks. Just didn't have time to put it on and today's the day. Lake bar rack. Oh yeah, the light bar. I forgot about that. <laughs> light bar. I'm assuming these are all the crossbars and then all the brackets and hardware. All right, so I got everything unpackaged, looking really good. Uh, super happy with the quality and the packaging. If you've ever watched Adam Savage's channel, YouTube channel, who was like one of the co-stars of Mythbusters, he really preaches first order of retrievability when he's building stuff. I just got these magnets and I must say, honestly, cause all this was like in a case and then in a case and then in a case and it slows your workflow down. So I got these magnet mounts that I'll link below but basically it's like, okay, you need a drill bit, you pull off the drill bit and then you just put it back. So yeah, that's first order of retrievability. You just grab your drill bit or whatever you need um, and it's really easy to pull off and then you just put it right back when you're done and you can see everything, every size. You're not fumbling through all of these different cases. So eventually I want this to be on a magnet system, which is my impact set and my wrenches are over there and you can see how that slows down the process, especially when you have all this shit in the way, which I need to get rid of. But same thing goes for this. When you have all your tools laid out and all your batteries laid out, you are way quicker working. So you just grab your impact and then you'd have, when I'm done, all my impacts on a magnet and you're way quicker. All right guys, so we are, I have all the hardware laid out here. Um, I'll show you quickly how everything goes together. So the longer bolts are gonna be what's going into the roof once you take off the stock roof rails. It goes in like this with the corresponding washers and these rubber uh, spacers. And it's labeled middle, rear, front. And then all the black hardware, if you got like a black roof rack, goes into the side uh, cross rails. And then I suggest putting all the spacers on all the bolts to save you time so you're not fumbling with it over by the rack, dropping it. And then, yeah, other than that, it should be a fairly easy install. It helps if you have like an electric ratchet, of course, or something, but you can just do this all by hand or if you have like an Allen key. And then a 13 mil socket and an 11 mil socket. So only like three things and yeah, you're good to go. All right, so yeah, just snugging up the bolts. I'm not like fully, torquing them down um, and we'll just go through and do the top uh, front and then the back and then we'll go and do all the middles and then we'll snug it all up after uh, to, to spec to torque even though I don't know what that is but we'll we'll uh, ugga dugga it on don't do that <laughs> don't ugga dugga gone like it's worked for me my whole life once you know once you've installed enough stuff it's not like a willy-nilly ugga-dugga. It's a calculated ugga-dugga. And so like, you know, once you use a tool, I'll know like, you know, a couple impacts, bam, bam, I'm at like 30 foot-pounds. Couple more, 60. Couple more, I'm at 100. So eventually you know how many ugga-duggas you need. But if you're learning, don't, don't do that. If you're learning, use a, uh, an Allen key and just tighten it down or something like that. Or, no. Or torque wrench, yeah. I have one of those. Uh, it's pretty dusty. <laughs> I Ask Calvin, man. Calvin knows the one ugga dug or two. That is a like this thing is spec. this thing's pretty ugga dugga friendly because you can like uh, regulate the throttle. 
and then I'm on setting one. So it, like you can see, see, it, it'll fail. But if I was on setting three, it would try to apply like 200 foot pounds of torque and absolutely strip the shit out of these bolts. So I don't know why I'm telling you this. Probably none of you have this tool anyways, but if you do, now you know. So you can just drop in your T-nuts. You kind of just hold it with one finger, put this on, and it's a little bit of a balancing act. And then you kind of just get it in the T-nut. And then once you get one on, uh, the other one's easier. But yeah, make sure you have your washer on. And then just leave these just finger tight because you're gonna have to adjust the crossbar and these depending on, just to line up the bolt hole where the factory roof rail was. But yeah, pretty easy install honestly uh, and you don't need many tools so we'll keep it we'll keep it going okay so for the stock roof rails these plastic caps just come off uh, be careful if you're using like a metal tool of course and then after you get the plastic caps off it's two bolts here two bolts here one in the middle slides off and then there's two more bolts to remove kind of like the bracket yeah let's get going pretty light all right wow it is dirty so just quickly clean out all the grime and then uh, so I vacuumed it with my disgusting dog hair filled vacuum that was blowing dog hair in my face and then I'm cleaning it out and then we'll apply the silicone around the bolt holes and then right before we put in the bolts uh, We'll put in more silicone for how dirty it is. And then it doesn't have to be perfect, but you just want a cleaner surface to apply the silicone on. And then you can throw the roof rack on. Oh! So you can use black or clear silicone. I just had clear. Let's put a little more on after. Need new rag. This one's been too used. So pro tip, it's way easier to put on the T-nuts 
uh, laying flat. Put the middle one in first, and then after it's in, you can shift the fairing to align it with the next one, the two T-nuts, and then you can shift it to align it with the last one, and then you can tighten it all down. All right, guys, so it's all done. Uh, pretty easy install overall, like you don't need many tools. And uh, the light bar is sitting too high currently. The light bar I got is too wide and it wouldn't work with the bracket. So I'm gonna have to make little like uh, extensions. I'll show you that, but so it will sit lower, like right next to the fairing, but I just mounted it up there for now. So yeah, overall super happy. The following night, I decided to make some new, longer light bar brackets from scratch. I had some leftover steel, so I took the existing brackets and traced them out for rough dimensions, and then added an extra inch, roughly. I then drilled all the necessary holes for hardware and bent it in my vise, then gave it a quick coat of black spray paint. I just had to make bigger L brackets um, on a slight upward slope, and yeah, very happy with the... Uh, how it looks now. Sherpa's probably gonna send me new ones, but I just keep learning how to make new brackets, and uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. There's a zip tie here, because I still gotta wire it in. I just have it holding here, but uh, I'll probably do that tomorrow, so. All right, thanks for watching everyone. Uh, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Next week, I'll probably do some exploring. I'll just go over a couple of the questions that people had in previous videos uh, and try and answer those. So some people have suggested I get a hitch mounted rear tire carrier and I might do that option. Uh, I just don't love the fact that it's using the hitch and therefore the departure angle is gonna be impacted. I'd rather get that tire up and out of the way and have something that wouldn't catch on obstacles. Uh, because I like the tough trails I do. I'm leaning towards a hybrid bumper in the short term uh, where I chop the rear bumper and then have like a steel bar kind of protecting around it. Uh, and then future plans would be to go to a coastal off-road dual swing out rear tire carrier with like the jerry cans or something. So Brad asked what is more preferable, the GX470 or the GX460, like the earlier models. I think that comes down to personal preference. I like the GX470 and how it looks better. I think it has more potential to look a lot meaner, but the GX460 has some improvements. I think it gets better fuel economy uh, with the updated V8 engine. It has a stronger rear diff. Obviously the interior is updated and not as dated as the GX470 interior, but that comes down to personal preference, I think. A bunch of you guys keep saying uh, that I should come up to BC. I do have plans to come up to BC, hopefully as COVID keeps dying down. Me and Matt are gonna make a trip out there this summer, hopefully, uh, and do some trails. So the last question I get often is the grill lights. I didn't go over exactly how to do it. Um, if it's your first wiring project, I don't know if it's the best first wiring project, but basically you need to buy the grill lights and then you need to drill out the corresponding holes where you want it in the grill. Uh, after that, so I used a step bit for that. And then after that, so you need to connect all the positives and the negatives together. Um, so I soldered all the positives of each light together and I had to extend it because they come with very short uh, wires. So I uh, extended it, I think it was like 16 gauge wire. So you have to solder that connection and then on all of them and then connect it. And then I ran it down through the hood. I did the same for all the grounds, the negatives, and I ran, ran them down the hood and then the negative goes to the battery, or you could probably ground it off to like any metal object, and then the power goes to a fuse tap. So you get a fuse tap at a local auto parts store, and it's kind of like an add a fuse. So you put it where one of your 10 amp fuses or five amp fuses would have been, and you that's how it's getting the power is through that fuse because you don't want the lights on all the time. When Even when the car's parked, you want it on when the vehicle turns on, so you could go to like the fuel pump or something and then it's going to be drawing power into the grill lights. So basically, once you buy the lights, you need to buy a little extra wiring. I soldered the connections, but maybe you can find like some connectors that would work for you. I just like soldering, I've never had it fail. I know some people are against it, but uh, I'm a fan of it and it's super easy to do. Uh, it might be a little intimidating at first, but like 
super easy. It's like using a hot glue gun. So yeah, that pretty much sums everything up to do with the grill lights. If you have any further questions, let me know, but it's not like super easy to do, but I wouldn't say it's difficult in any way. It's just time consuming and doing all the wiring properly takes time, but that's so I don't get any water or moisture in the wiring. So yeah, thanks for watching uh, today's video. The next video will probably be an adventure out in the bushes somewhere. Um, eager to get out off-roading. I've been so busy with Black House Cinema stuff, so you can look forward to that and I'll catch you next week.